So if you haven't already seen my original video to do with sarking felts, then I'll put the link down below in the description. But in that video, I start talking about the different vapor permeability and air tightness or breathable, which this one is the only one on here, which is breathable. So go and look at that video. It's down below. It's linked down below. I talk about those. But what I actually don't go into in much detail is this one over here, because these two are classed as low resistance. And these two were, are vapor permeable with this one being which we're now trying to call or is being called breathable, but really it's air permeable and vapor open. So it lets air move through it. And in the other video I just talked about, I actually put a, a mirror behind it and I blow through it and you can see that I can actually force air through this one. So this one's like really the top notch, but that's if you need to vent a roof and also let the vapor out. Some some slates like these particular artificial ones which i'll explain in a minute are these are these are um, air closed they don't let air through so if, depending on what you're going to do underneath them and i'm going to show you that depends on whether you should be using this which is an hr which is a a high resistance uh vapor closed so it doesn't let air through and it doesn't let vapor through now i see this misused a lot of the time so that's really what i'm going to explain why that's misused and i'm going to explain where you would use this and why you would use it so let's go back to these artificial slates the thing is with artificial slates being man-made they fit together very tightly these being wet because they've been outside this one's already sucked to that one look that's all, all suction because air can't pass between them i've got to slide that off to be able to lift it up I put this one over the top of that although when you put these together there's a small gap in between you say would it breathe through there but it doesn't because when they're all overlapped like that these are classed as airtight there's no air moves underneath these where a natural slate if you take natural slates like these um, first of all natural slate being natural is all crinkly on the top and is all crinkly on the bottom so when these are overlapped like this there's all sorts of different ways that air can move around underneath them but not only that when they when they are put together they normally rock a little bit so as you've got loads of them on a roof there's little gaps and air can move underneath them so these these are classed as air open and a lot of tiles interlocking tiles uh, small clay tiles they're all air open they can all have movement of air around them there's not many tiles on uh, the market which are classed as air closed like this one and there's lots of different brands you should always go and see what the manufacturers say because you're fine and, and the problem is is that you know people don't read the manufacturer's specifications but it'll always say in the manufacturer's specifications that these are air closed and therefore you need to vent underneath them so what does that mean venting underneath them well at the moment underneath this i'm showing you this vapor barrier because this vapor barrier is a high resistance vapor closed product if there was any moisture underneath here that moisture cannot get up underneath to the bottom of these and condense and cause a problem so this is a perfect setup for why you would use this you've got a single baton going across and you don't need to vent above the sarking fell and below the artificial slate you do not have to need venting here you may need to have venting in the roof down below depending on what you're going what, what's going on down there because that could be a warm roof or a cold roof construction there could be a vented channel underneath it that's different we're not talking about that we're talking about when i go onto roofs and i see that people have used this kind of product underneath these with a single batten which is wrong because you're allowing, because it's vapor permeable, you're allowing the moisture to come up. So let me just make sure this, that people understand. What I'm doing here with this setup, with this sarking felt underneath here, is absolutely perfectly correct. There's no movement of vapor through this and you don't need to vent at this area. Let me change it around and show you with this product, the mistakes that are made, and what you can do if you want to use it. Right, now I see this all the time. This is wrong. What we've got is that we've got a vapor permeable, which is this one here, 
low resistance vapor permeable product underneath a air closed artificial slate. What you're inviting to happen here is you're inviting moisture from down below to move through this, get into an unvented system which is underneath this part between there and there and could condense on the back of these and then cause problems with rotting of the battens the fixings and water just generally running out from underneath there you should not be using this directly underneath this if it is single battens like this but if you do want to use this you can double batten let me show you what double batten is just so we all understand so now this is perfectly correct. You've got a vapor permeable sarking felt, which is this one. We've got an air gap here that air can move up and down, providing you vent it this end and you providing you vent it this end above this. Now, you've also got a vent under it as well, because this is not breathable. This is what people keep thinking. And it's really missold as well. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how it's missold. I'll show you on the internet where this is sold as breathable. This is not breathable. It is vapor permeable. So this is one of the reasons why people are making so many mistakes. But it's vapor permeable. Now, this one is breathable. And because it's breathable and vapor permeable, even this one, you still got to cross batten if you're going to use it underneath this. With this one, you may not have to vent underneath it but you would have to vent above it. So there's lots of different combinations, but this is cross battening. And if you're gonna use just this particular one, cause this one is, this is really good product. These are, these ones are relatively new on the market and they're definitely more expensive than these ones, which have been on the market a long time, which are only vapor permeable and you must vent underneath and you must vent underneath on the one that I showed you before. Cross battening, absolutely fine to use underneath slates which are air closed if you're gonna cross batten. But why would you cross batten? Um, you know, if you're using this and you've got no reason to cross batten, you've got the extra cost of putting the battens in and you've got the extra high. So the answer is, is that if you don't need to do it, don't do it. And I'll go back to the other one just to really make sure that we're clear. You do not need to do this if you use the correct vapor barrier and the, the correct sarking felt underneath it. Let me go back to that one. Okay, so now I've got the correct uh, sarking felt underneath this. We've got air closed slates that fit so tightly that no air moves through them. They're classed as air, air closed. Always look at the manufacturer's specifications of how you should vent underneath this if you need to. And it will say to you that if you're using a high resistance vapor closed sarking felt underneath it you do not have to vent at this point and of course you have to vent underneath it depending on what's going on and that would have to be through ventilation right the way through now let me just show you a couple of other things what i've tried to do here is to show you because there's all sorts of specifications that people are not actually getting right with this first of all some of these new even with the sarking felts some of the new sarking felts have to be taped along this area all the way up so that when you put your fixings through they fit airtight so again read the manufacturer's specifications of the sarking felt because they may have to be taped vertically and this join here and i'll just move these off of here for a second Okay, where you overlap here, a lot of these lines are to do with how much you overlap one or two of these different layers as you're moving up and down the roof. Now, traditionally, we've been, in, in many recent years of past, we've been asked to put a batten over the top of that joint to stop this from flapping up and down. But that's not the case anymore. And the reason it's not the case anymore is that if you've got a sequence of battens like so, and you're, you're doing this, and then all of a sudden, you're putting another batten at that particular point over the top. It was deemed unsafe because roofers would walk up and down the roof on the battens and this batten being out of sequence would put them off and they could trip and fall over. So they decided that that's not a good idea to put that batten over the top to hold it down. So now the new specifications on nearly all of these sarking felts, but you've got to read the manufacturer's specification, 
is that you put a tape across here and tape it down, which stops it from flapping. Now, again, at the end, I'll show you uh, a couple of different jobs we've done where we've taped them. And of course, these tapes that go that way and the tapes that, that go that way, they all add a cost to this. Um, so again, it's not just the cost of the sarking felt these days, it's the cost of all the components that go with the sarking felt. So you've got to be really careful um, which one you're choosing because some of these tapes can be really expensive. So the next thing I want to talk about is the drape. So they want a drape on this of about 15 mil. This is a, a really good drape. That's about the right. You don't really want more than that. And you certainly don't want less. Again, I'll show you some examples on the screen in a second. I'm going into so many jobs and I'm doing surveys on jobs where they're brand spanking new, housing estates where you might have 20, 40, 60 houses and the roofers have gone in and when they've put this down, they've pulled it and I've got creases going, going across this way inside it on the sarking felt. There's no drape whatsoever. They say 15 mil. Being relatively tight like that is not the end of the world. The reason that we have a drape in the middle is this, is that if you do happen to have a leak that gets through, it runs to the center, runs down, and can get out. That's the reasoning on, on the, the drape. Also, you don't want it too tight because it's more like a drum, uh, drum skin and it can make a little bit of a noise if it's too tight. So 15 mil at the maximum, but certainly not really tight going across like that. Okay, so we're gonna to go to the computer now and I'll show you some different examples of the drape and the tapes that we use and just different ways that we've used some of this in the past. And also, I'm gonna show you uh, quite a few examples of this particular one being, I, I, I've got so many examples of this particular one being used on this application with just the single battens and not cross battens and unfortunately brand spanking new roofs but when I go along and check them to try and sign them off you go yeah unfortunately that's been done incorrectly so let's have a look on the computer so this one is as you can see a lovely new slate roof I mean they've done a lovely job note there is some venting on it all the work around the outside box gutters all been done glass fiber which I don't like but you know at the end of the day what a lovely smart roof note the venting of course now we're going to go inside and have a look inside and look they haven't cut the vents through so the vents are venting to nowhere now look how tight the sarking felt is on this look it's I mean, that is so tight no water's ever going to run down that is it so and of course being that it goes across wise it's going to spread the water across to the holes where the battens are fixed and of course then you could get leaks there if if you had a problem with that now, if we go and look at this one, this is really interesting. Uh, we move over this. There's a lot of things wrong with this particular one. I'll just stop it there. I mean, obviously, we're we're on a pitched roof here. We're also it's a pitched roof with a flat roof above it. We call it a crown roof. And just here, this is supposed to these trays, which are always too flimsy in my eyes, uh, here to help stop this insulation pushing up against it, so you can have ventilation coming up from behind. So here you've got some ventilation. Unfortunately, there's not enough ventilation above, but you can start to see that A, we've got the sarking felt too tight. It's, they obviously think it's a, a breathable sarking felt. It's not, it's vapor open, but there's too much moisture in the loft itself. And the ventilation isn't good enough all the way around. But not only that, down, down here, all this insulation, which is on the vertical, because you've got a room below it, there's no, um, vapor control and it's very important to have good vapor control at ceiling level and good ventilation as well and again wrong sarking felt because this is the tiles that has been used underneath it and um, you shouldn't have this should have been double battened on top and it, and it wasn't double battened this is another interesting one now this one it's only, I mean they hadn't even been paid unfortunately on this particular one at this stage and we can look inside there this insulation has all just been fitted from the inside as a retrofit and that that was the sarking felt which is is not breathing no ventilation anywhere so again not not very good at all i've shown you this one a few times um 
again this one was on its way the, cu the customer wasn't particularly happy when I did this inspection with the uh, roofers so that's why they called me in but I had to go and have a look up based on what I've seen here I had to go and uh, research on what Sarkin felt this was and again it is um, vapor open this is this is not vapor closed and they only single battening as as you if I go back to the beginning there where were we there you you know you can see that that's um you know the, the, the and there's no venting no venting going in anywhere um th there's loads of other misdemeanors on this one the wrong uh, um uh nails on this particular one because they're galvanized nails this hasn't been taped a few other things but th obviously there's no ventilation in it and it's the wrong sagging felt which is the main reason uh, that i was called in for for this particular one so here you can see taping going down and you can see that there is a drape in this which is probably slightly too much at the moment on this but this hasn't been fitted this uh, um, uh, Sarkin felt uh, just the tapes going down and it's, it's all going together so perhaps this will be stretched out a, a little bit more um, beforehand but I'd rather see if I can go back to that I'd rather see that uh, there is a, a drape in it rather than no drape. Now, if you look at this, this is typical cross battening with venting going at the bottom and venting going at the top. I've got plenty of examples of this as we move forward, which I'll show you, not on this video though. Now it's important to understand that this is what will happen if you do get it wrong. The main takeaway from all of this is ventilation. You've got to ventilate everything, otherwise this is the kind of thing that happens. Now, looking at high level up here, it's typical of a roofer to take the felt because of trying to keep the, the job watertight, take the, the sarking felt, up and around and over the top even if you've got a vented and I see I'm going to be doing a video on this even with the vented ridges um, I'm seeing that they're they're not vented even when they're fitted because of the way that the uh, sarking felt is taken and taken all the way over the top this one's got no venting in it whatsoever ceilings haven't been sealed there were spotlights down below and this is what can happen when when you get it wrong but hopefully the takeaway from this is ventilation ventilation and make sure you choose the correct sarking felt now if you need any help or anything like that on any of these projects you've got or you've got any photographs or videos you'd like me to look over please don't hesitate to send them my details are in the uh, description down below hopefully speak to you all soon